Welcome back to Minute Med. We will discuss chronic gastritis by H. pylori in this video. We also have done a video on acute gastritis, so don't forget to go check that out. H. pylori or Helicobacter pylori is a type of bacteria that infects your stomach. H. pylori infection is the leading cause of chronic gastritis in the world. Statistically speaking, at least half of the world's population is infected with H. pylori. And even in developed countries, the prevalence is close to 28%. H. pylori invades the stomach's mucus layer to reside on the gastric epithelium. Usually acquired during childhood, once present in the stomach, this bacteria passes through the protective mucus layer and settles on the surface of the gastric epithelium. H. pylori usually infects the antrum first, which is the distal part of the stomach. And this initial infection can cause acute gastritis. After some time, this infection will spread from the antrum to the body of the stomach. The initial infection will almost always progress into chronic gastritis, however. That's when the patient will start showing symptoms and head over to the primary care doctor. H. pylori in this case is an invader. So, a chronic H. pylori infection will cause inflammation of the gastric mucosa as usual. So you will find prominent number of neutrophil infiltrates in these inflamed areas. So to fight this infection, the stomach will try more and more to fight it by recruiting more WBCs or white blood cells. Eventually, the stomach will get burnt out fighting this infection and normal acid secreting glands in the stomach will begin to disappear. This will lead to mucosal atrophy. Atrophy means cells shrinking in size. So when these cells in these glands start to shrink or begin to atrophy, the ability to secrete hormones and acid will also decrease. That's when this condition is called chronic atrophic gastritis. Chronic inflammation from H. pylori can lead to intestinal metaplasia, which means that the normal gastric column epithelium will develop goblet cells hyperplasia to withstand all that punishment, right? This is kind of a defense wall to mimic the intestinal epithelium. So in this case, we can see mucus-filled goblet cells in the stomach. That's why Chronic gastritis is also called metaplastic atrophic gastritis. Over time, these cells will lose control of this transformation process leading to dysplasia and ultimately cancer. So in the case of chronic gastritis, there is a high risk of cancer as well. And that is how chronic gastritis can progress into the worst case scenario. Speaking of the symptoms of chronic gastritis, it's virtually similar to acute gastritis. A patient will mainly present with epigastric pain and also nausea, vomiting, anorexia and weight loss. So let's talk about the diagnosis. What's the best way to test for H. pylori in the stomach? The gold standard for H. pylori diagnosis is the systemic identification of the bacteria on biopsy specimens. To increase the sensitivity of the test, we can do something called the rapid urease test. Urease is an enzyme which is not normally produced in our body. H. pylori metabolizes the urea in our body into carbon dioxide. So we can test for urease in our biopsy sample to confirm the presence of H. pylori. Another less invasive way of diagnosing is to do the urea breath test. So this is how a urea breath test works. A patient will drink radiolabeled urea and H. pylori will metabolize this urea into the radiolabeled carbon dioxide. And patients will breathe out this specific radiolabeled carbon dioxide into a detector and we can confirm the presence of H. pylori. That's about it for chronic gastritis. Don't forget to check our video on acute gastritis. I'll see you again.